What time is it? It's bonus time. We've been talking about applications of big O to computer science, but mathematicians often use this notation and other more exotic asymptotic symbols in their research. There's an entire field of asymptotic analysis that is important both in theoretical and in applied mathematics. Let's take some time, do a preview of some results. If you're curious, don't worry about details or proofs. This is bonus material. Think back to the previous chapter when we talked about the gamma function, gamma of x that is kind of like a factorial function. We said that it grows fast, really fast. It grows kind of like x to the x, but not exactly. What exactly is the growth rate of gamma of x is contained in a wonderful formula called Stirling's formula. This is an asymptotic expansion of the gamma function. It says that for real positive numbers, gamma of x can be written as square root of 2 pi divided by x times quantity x over e to the x power times quantity 1 plus big O of 1 over x. And this is where we get the idea that gamma of x is kind of like x to the x but not exactly, because you have to divide by the square root of x and the e to the x, and you got the square root of 2 pi out in front, but to leading order term, that is telling you just how fast gamma of x grows. Now, because n factorial is really gamma of x plus 1, you can get an equivalent and much more popular version for n factorial n factorial can be written as square root of 2 pi n, quantity n over e to the nth power, quantity 1 plus big O of 1 over n. Wait a minute, how do you get that? Oh, you can take the previous formula for gamma of x, just substitute in x plus 1, and practice your big O manipulation, factoring out constants, simplifying. Now, this ladder formula for n factorial, this winds up being useful in a lot of different contexts. For example, let's go back to thinking about computational complexity. It is sometimes the case that you'll have an algorithm and you can show that it has complexity that is in big O of log of n factorial. And the question is, uh, what is that really? I mean, n factorial is really, really, really big, but then log just really, really cuts it back. Well, we can use Sterling's formula to say what big O of log of n factorial is. I'm going to hit the right-hand side of the formula with a logarithm and apply log laws. It's a product of three terms, so I get the sum of the logs of those three terms. The first term, that root 2 pi n, that turns into big O of log of n. The square root just gives me a constant out in front. That second term, n over e to the nth power, applying the log to that, gives me that second term is big O of n log n. And that third term, what's the log of 1 plus something small? Oh, we remember that. That's just the leftover stuff, the small stuff, in this case, big O of 1 over n. Now, among these three terms, it's the middle one that dominates. So, big O of log of n factorial is really in big O of n log n. And that's a lot more descriptive. Another place in which n factorial appears frequently is in discrete probability. Here's an example. Let's say you have a fair coin and you flip it two n times. What are the odds that you get exactly half heads and half tails? I don't want to go through all the details of figuring out exactly what that probability is, but if you do so in a natural way, you can show that that probability is quantity 2n factorial divided by n factorial times n factorial, times 2 to the 2n power. And that's it. 
But, I mean, what is that, really? I mean, as n is getting large, as n is going to infinity, what's happening to that? Both the numerator and the denominator are huge. I would guess that the probability goes to zero, but it's not clear how quickly as a function of n. Well, we can use Stirling's formula, but this is going to take a little bit of work. Let me give you a hint at how this goes. In the numerator, what is 2n factorial? Plugging that into Stirling's formula, we get 2 times quantity pi n to the 1 half. And then I get a 2n divided by e, all to the 2n power. And the last term is going to be quantity 1 plus big O of 1 over n. The 2 just comes out as a constant. Okay, that's the numerator. The denominator has n factorial squared in it. So I'm going to square the terms in Stirling's formula. I get quantity 2 pi n times quantity n over e to the 2n power times quantity 1 plus big O of 1 over n, all of that squared. And then I have a 2 to the 2nth power left over downstairs. Now, I'm going to leave it to you to do the simplification, the very non-trivial simplification, to see that a whole bunch of stuff cancels out. And what we are left with in the end is 1 over square root of pi times n plus a leftover term that is in big O of n to the minus 3 halves. And this is really cool. This means that, yes, the probability does go to 0 as n goes to infinity, but it doesn't go to 0 very quickly. It goes like 1 over the square root of n. Now, if you compare that to the probability of what happens if you flip a coin two n times and you only have one head, that goes to zero much more quickly. Okay, well, that's all fun and maybe useful, but what about some pure mathematics? Here is a hint at something called the prime number theorem that addresses the question, how many prime numbers are there? You know, like 2, 3, 5, 7, not 9, 11, 13, 17, etc., etc. Well, there are infinitely many primes, although how you show that is a lot of fun. But how dense are they in the natural numbers? One way to get at this is something called pi of x, the prime counting function. It is exactly the number of primes less than or equal to x. So pi of 10 is equal to 4, 2, 3, 5, 7. Pi of 11 is 5. All right, what we want to know is the asymptotics of this function, pi of x, as x goes to infinity. Well, let's see. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that pi is really in big O of x, but that's not very helpful. Right? That's just using the fact that big O is a cosmic less than or equal to sign. We'd like something a bit more precise. And that's the content of the prime number theorem, which in its simplest form says, somewhat imprecisely, that pi of x grows like x divided by log of x. So as x goes to infinity, this does go to infinity, but not all that quickly. A more precise version uses this language of big O and says that pi of x is x over log of x times quantity 1 plus big O of 1 over log of x. So it's giving you a bound on the term past the leading order term in the asymptotics of pi. And that's kind of cool. And it's kind of deep. If you were to get more precise asymptotics, if you were to get a better bound, then this would connect to some very, very deep problems in number theory, things like the Riemann hypothesis and other really cool stuff. In the end, mathematicians really like this language of big O. We like working with large things, with small things, with limits. Asymptotic analysis appears all throughout mathematics research.